rebuilding a model steam plant at part 23, making a suitable steel mounting base for the 501 boiler and making the gas burner holder. I'm having to make the base again because the last one went wrong. I marked out the position for the holes on the original piece of steel plate and apart from the positions not being ideal, I went ahead and countersunk the holes on the wrong side so the plate didn't fit the boiler. I really don't like to bodge jobs, so I'm starting again with a new piece of steel plate and a different design for the burner holder. The original brass mounting, bent from very thin brass, wasn't really good, and I freely admit it was not one of my better ideas. Making the burner holder this way, though, is a far better plan. And even though I'm showing the pieces of brass at each side of the burner, the finished configuration will not be like this. I've marked the brass angle with a felt tip pen to the length of the burner. Before I cut this on the bandsaw though, I'm going to make sure that the holes are in the correct position on the new piece of 3mm thick steel plate. The problem with the original base was I did not initially mark the hole positions in the correct place. The mounting feet on a 501 boiler are much smaller than on a 504 boiler which I'm used to. And because the mounting feet are smaller, the position of the holes is critical. Before I start, I've written the word top on one side of the steel plate. Here you see me starting to mark the positions of the holes. If you look at the shape of the boiler's mounting feet, you'll see that the casting curves very quickly. And previously I just marked the holes too close to the curved part, so it would have been impossible to put a nut on there, without filing it flat and I don't want to do that because it would weaken the mounting feet. This time I'm taking no chances. To mount the position for the mounting holes I'm going to use a twist drill which should indicate the correct position for the mounting hole. This is a brand new twist drill set that I bought a while back from RDG Tools and it really is very good. It's a high speed steel drill set and the drill bits are very sharp and very well made. Here you can see the marks left by the twist drill, and I am aware that they are not in exactly the same place relative to each other. That's because the castings that support the boiler are not 100% accurate. What I'm going to do now is make a deeper mark on the points where I want to drill the holes, and for this I've fitted a 1 8 of an inch twist drill into my Proxon motor tool. And as you can see, these twist drill bits are really sharp. I cannot think of a quicker way to blunt small drill bits than to use them running at high speed and attempting to drill steel. But in this instance, the twist drill cut so easily, I had to be careful not to go all the way through. Before drilling all the way through though, I'm going to double check the positions. First of all with a ruler, followed by moving the boiler into the position over the holes and everything looks okay. I think this time when I drill the mounting holes, when I fit the mounting bolts, they will be in a correct position to be able to fit a nut to them. I want to shorten this metal plate slightly, it's just a cosmetic thing. I've put the guide in place on the smaller of the two bandsaws that I have, and now I'm trying to cut the piece of steel all the way along. This small bandsaw is quite good for brass, and it's okay for round section steel, but it's not too good on this flat steel, which is very hard. This is a much better idea. I fitted the piece of steel into my bandsaw and here I'm squirting some lubricant at it. This lubricant in the can is at a very high pressure and it goes everywhere. And really when I think about it, an ordinary oil can would have been a better idea. I only used the aerosol lubricant because the can was quite close to the bandsaw. With the piece of steel plate shortened, I'm now drilling the holes for the boiler. I'm currently using a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill which is clearance size for 5BA. This does appear to be quite a hard piece of steel, I don't know why this is. If I think on the next time I speak to Matt at Blackgates I will ask him why this is. Here I'm countersinking the holes and this time they are underneath the plate. My countersink is not particularly sharp and as I countersink the holes it's raising a burr around the edge. This is not a problem though because once I've finished the drilling operations I will be using my 4 inch belt sander to roughen up the surface to key for the paint. 
The next part of the job requires me to cut these pieces of brass angle to the correct length. I've already cut one and this was the second piece. Now I'm marking out the pieces of brass angle to drill some holes to mount the two pieces of angle that will support the burner to the steel plate. I've come up with an idea that I think will work well. I'm going to elevate the brass angle away from the steel plate so that the heat from the burner is not directly conducted to the plate. I'll hold it on four bolts. This is a bit of an experiment and I will show it in detail in the next video. Currently in the first part of the experiment I'm drilling the holes tapping size for 5BA. And the tapping size drill is supposed to be 2.65 millimeters, but I don't have one that size, so this is just 2.6 millimeters diameter. For this job, I'm using a small 5BA taper tap, and this seems to thread the holes in the brass perfectly. I'm not using any lubricant because brass generally doesn't need it. Then there's the question of if I was going to use lubricant, what would I use? Machine oil is quite good. I would normally use 3-in-1, but also I could use paraffin, which is the same lubricant you would use for aluminium or aluminum. Some of the greasy, tapping fat type of compounds can be counterproductive on certain metals because the hold, because the thick, greasy consistency of the lubricant will hold the chips in place, which could damage the thread as the tap goes through the hole and is then withdrawn. And that is it for this episode. I'll show you how I make this special gas burner mounting in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.